Good afternoon. Uh, how do I start this? I guess I started the best way I can. I want to make this video as short as I can, but I'm not going to shortchange what God has to say um, to you through me. So I want to say first, if um, if you're drawn to this video, if the title of this video, the name of God, got your attention, um, I think that you should stay and, and listen to this whole video. It's very, it's crucial. And for those of you who already have a relationship with Jesus Christ, I pray that you also stay to the end. Um, the Lord spoke to me this morning, so much so that I always pray before I dive into scripture and I had scripture open to what I was gonna read, which is one of the Psalms, and I prayed. And the way the Lord spoke to me, it's like, I'll explain it, I'll, I'll just explain it in a little while. So I wanna ask if you haven't subscribed to the, my channel yet, if you can kindly do so, um, because that's only gonna have the YouTube algorithm push this video forward. Um, and watch it. Don't just watch a little bit of it, but watch all of it because that's the only that's the way it works. That um, YouTube doesn't push videos that only get a you know a minute or two uh, views. You know, the longer the video, and the more the people watch. Um, it's sending the YouTube algorithm that this is something that people are interested in and they want to hear, so it pushes it forward. So I want as many people as possible to hear this message. And if you can kindly share with whoever you want, whoever the Lord places on your heart, and again. If you don't have a relationship with Jesus Christ, um, I, I urge you right now that you seek him. It's very easy. Um, just say, Lord Jesus, I admit that I'm a sinner. Forgive me of my sins. Repent of your sins, which means turn away. Turn away from the things that you're doing, the life that you are living. And ask him to come and be Lord and Savior of your life. You know, ad, ad, um, admit and believe in who he is. Uh, the only begotten Son of God, and that He died on a cross, not just for my sins, but for the sins of the whole world, so that you may be forgiven, so that you may have eternal life with Him in heaven. So anyway, so I'm going to read the scripture that this is all tied into, and, and I'll explain to you why. I'm going to read the scripture. It's a couple of verses, at least 10 verses, and then um, I'm going to share the message that the Lord gave me, and it's amazing. I was just talking to a brother in the Lord. It's amazing how He spoke to me. So it's in uh, Revelation chapter 14. Um, if you know or you may not know, the book of Revelation is not necessarily in chronological order. It doesn't, you know, like if you're reading chapter 4, 5, 6, uh, it doesn't, it's, it is and it isn't. It's like some of it is a little bit off. Um, at least that's what Bible scholars say. So uh, chapter 14, uh, verses 6 through whenever the Lord leads me to stop. Then I saw another angel flying in the midst of heaven, having the, the everlasting gospel to preach um, to those who dwell on the earth, to every nation, tribe, tongue, and people, saying with a loud voice, Fear God and give him, glo give him glory, for the hour of his judgment has come, and worship him who made heaven and earth, the sea and the springs of water. And another angel followed, saying, Babylon is fallen, is fallen, that great city, because she has made all nations drink of the wine of the wrath of her fornication. Uh, what is the great Babylon? I'm not going to go into that here, but we'll just skip that for now. I have my opinion on what Babylon the Great is. Then a certain, uh, then a third angel followed him, saying with a loud voice, If anyone worships the beast and his image and receives his mark on his forehead or on his hand, he himself shall also drink of the wine of the wrath of God, which is poured out full strength into the cup of his indignation. He shall be tormented with fire and brimstone in the presence of the holy angels and in the presence of the Lamb, which is Jesus Christ. And the smoke of the fire, of, uh, and the smoke of their torment ascended forever and ever, and they have no rest day and night. This is in hell. Who worship the beast and his image, and whoever receives the mark of his name. Here is the patience of the saints. There are those who keep the commandments of God and the faith of Jesus. Then I heard a voice from heaven saying to me, Write, Blessed are the, do are the dead. Blessed are the dead who die in the Lord from now on. Yes, says the Spirit, that they may rest from their labors and their works and follow them. Then I looked and behold a white cloud and on the cloud sat one like the Son of Man, being Jesus, having on his head a golden crown and in his hand a sharp sickle. 
And another angel came out to the temple, crying with a loud voice to him who sat on the cloud, thrust in your sickle and reap, for the time has come for you to reap, for the harvest of the earth is ripe. So he who sat on the cloud thrust his sickle on the earth, and the earth was reaped. Then another angel came out of the temple which is in heaven, also he also having a sharp sickle. And another angel came out from the altar who had the power over fire, and he cried with a loud cry to him who had the sharp sickle, saying, Thrust in your, thrust in your sharp sickle and gather the clusters of the vine of the earth for her grapes are fully ripe. I'm gonna end right there. I think there's only more, two more verses in this chapter, but I'm gonna end right there. So I prayed to the Lord this morning because in my Bible, in, in that chapter, the book of Revelation, years ago, years ago, I wrote a question. Um, I, usually, I don't write what it means. It's I'm asking the Lord, like, what does this mean? Does this mean this? So in here, I wrote a second harvest, quote, you know, question mark, question mark. Is there another rapture? And and that's a question I put on it. I was asking the Lord. And the Lord answers when he answers. Sometimes it's right away, as he's done to me a lot. And sometimes it takes months, years, and sometimes he might not answer what you're asking. So I had a question there. Not that I was questioning God, as I said to my brother today. Not that you question God, but you ask questions of what you're reading and what it means. So I had a question like, what does this mean? And this was years ago. So the Lord spoke to me this morning. So I'm going to write down, because I, I stopped after my prayer. I didn't even read the Bible. I didn't even read what I was, I just started writing what he spoke to me very clearly. And I'm telling you, when the Lord speaks to me clearly, I hear him clearly through the Holy Spirit. And he spoke to me very clearly. And this is what he said, okay? So I wrote on the day today, 9, 9, 23. This morning while I was in prayer, I kept asking the Lord, what's going on? What's happening in the world, in society, in politics? Yes, even in the church. And he spoke these words to me. This is what he said. Don't be like Lot's wife. Don't look behind you. Just keep your eyes focused on me. I am going to deal with what's behind you. Just like I did with Sodom and Gomorrah. But first, I will take my church, my bride, out. You ask and I speak to you. Just as I did on May twenty on May 9th, twenty twenty, when you asked, when you asked me something, and I'll stop one second. I asked the Lord something on May twenty twenty, and I'm gonna link that video in here. And the Lord answered three three questions. What well, he, he didn't answer, he answered a question. He gave me a vision, and then he spoke a word so about three different things. And I want to tell you something. And this was back in twenty twenty. All three all three things happened. Two already happened and one is currently happening. And so I'm going to share that video. Here's a video that I recorded early on in, uh, when I started my YouTube channel. So excuse my, my stumbling in my words. So I'm going to share it and link it on here. So if you are curious to what the Lord spoke to me it, on May 9th, 2020, just go watch that. Because if not, this video will be too long. Um, and the Lord said, my desire, this is the Lord speaking to me this morning. My desire has always been that none would perish. I keep sending the world signs through natural disasters, through man-made disasters, through pestilence and disease. Not that I bring them, but I allow them. My desire is that through this, man will see and admit their need of me. But instead, the more I allow these things to happen, the more man continues in their evil ways. And instead of turning to me, they turn more to Satan, the father of lies, working through man. In that time, the tribulation, this is what the Lord told me, in that time, the tribulation, many will swear their allegiance to Satan. But there, there will be some who will turn to me. Some will be martyred for my name's sake. But that's only because they rejected me for so long. They'll be martyred because they'll realize during the tribulation, wow, my, my, my family member who was a believer, my friend who was a believer, God himself was speaking to my heart. But I was deaf and I was blinded and I, I did not heed his calling. And, other, and it says, and others I will protect during that time and provide their daily bread. So during the tribulation, there are going to be tribulation saints, tribulation believers. Some will be martyred, unfortunately, and some the Lord will protect and provide their daily bread, whatever it is may be. 
a cup of water, a piece of bread, whatever it may be, he's going to provide as he does for us today. But I pray that if you don't have a relationship with Jesus, that you don't let it get to that point and you receive him and ask him to come into your life now. And the Lord said to me, but at my second coming, I will pull them out to meet me, us, mean us, those who are raptured, believers that before the tribulation happened, who were raptured to the Lord. Uh, we will return with him. And Jesus says, I will pull them out to meet us in the cloud. I pull them out, meaning those who are still alive, those who are being persecuted for his name's sake during the tribulation period. And those who are martyred are going to be the ones that in tribulation that talks about the saints who were martyred, okay? That the blood, he sees the blood of those who were martyred in his name's sake. And it can, the Lord continues to say to me, um, and, I, and I, I wrote here, I said, just as Jesus did in his time here on earth, okay? He used... He spoke through parables and analogies using the terminology and phrases that the people of his time could easily relate to. The Lord spoke the same to me today. He said, your job, and just speaking about what I do as a living, your job as a manager has always been to take care of the tasks that are assigned to you. You are to concern yourself with what the owner of or higher up in the company are do you are in. You are not to concern yourself with what the owner or the higher up in the companies are doing or planning. If they are just people, they will be serving. They will be serving the best interests of the company, and and by doing so, they are serving the best interests of the workers. Okay, so don't concern yourself too much with what I am doing. You know I'm a just God, serving the best interests of my quote unquote company, my kingdom. So know that by doing so know that by doing so, I am working in the best interest of my workers, the believers. So everything that the Lord is doing is in in, in favor, in the best interests of those who believe in him, who surrendered to him. And this is what he spoke to me this morning. I might have missed one or two things to write down, but that's what he spoke to me this morning. So, um, very briefly, he, um, just go watch the video that I share on, on the message that he gave me. Uh, it's, it's, I didn't receive a lot of views because I didn't have a lot of subscribers back then. And I guess people are not interested in whatever it may be, but, um, the Lord spoke to me this morning that we as believers were to focus on, our work as workers were to focus on where we are doing for the company which is the kingdom of God okay and we are to continue working diligently in whatever he calls us to do whether you think it's something big or something small me personally he's using this channel for, to use me to do one of many things that I do in his name so um I just I just pray that you uh watch watch this and then on a side note I was listening to a video this morning about um uh, what was the video about? It, it was a very powerful video. He was talking about explaining the days of Noah. And we know that Jesus in the Olivet Discourse, he says that in the last days that the world will be as it was in the days of Noah and in the days of Lot. And it also talks about the Nephilim. If you know about the Nephilim, if you don't, you should research it. And it talks about the Nephilim. And then I start thinking about, because a friend of mine shared a video with me the other day, yesterday. And it talks about the Nephilim. And, and it talks about like all these UFOs that supposedly they're seeing now. And all these encounters. And and it's very powerful, what my friend shared with me. But I'm going to share with you the video that I watched this morning about um, the days of Noah. And how it explains. And... You listen to this video and you're like, wow, that's true. Wow, that's what's happening. Wow, that's what's really happening. And, you know, for those who don't have a relationship with Jesus Christ, I, you know, the day is going to come where God is going to just stop calling you. He, where he's just going to stop pulling on your heart. And he's going to give you into the deceptions of this world. He's going to blind your heart and your mind and your eyes. Okay? He's going to allow the evil one to grab hold of you because you are denying him because you're not heeding his call to you and it just comes to a point where God says okay whatever and he gives them up as it says in Romans 1 God gives the people up to a reprobate mind to their own desires and their own flesh so um, I pray that you would you know stop ignoring that call and turn to him and ask him to come into your life so anyway 
that's all I wanted to share right now. Um, and if you share something else, it's amazing. I just love when the Lord speaks to me. And as I said to my friend this morning, it, it's not too often. It's probably, it happens maybe two, three times a year or whenever he just speaks to me. Sometimes I get frustrated because I ask him and I want to hear things from him. I want to... I want him to speak to me and, and give me revelation of things, and he doesn't, and I get frustrated because I love hearing from him, but you know what's just most important? That he knows when my mind and my heart is right to receive whatever he wants to tell me, he'll give it to me, and it's not every day, so that's why when I see these people that they, every day they're constantly putting videos up, the Lord spoke to me, the Lord spoke to me, yeah, the Lord speaks to us, but in a profound way like that, it's not every day, it's not every day, so, you know, I, I'd approach those videos with caution. So anyway, so God bless you. Have a nice weekend. And hopefully, well, hopefully not. If he leaves me to post another video, I will. God bless you, my friends. Take care.